Okay. So uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. So very glad to have this chance to uh, share with our uh, uh, latest uh, contribution and uh, solution proposals for the OpenStack powered hybrid cloud, uh, uh, open hybrid cloud solution. Uh, I'm Dennis Ku, Chief Architect of uh, Huawei Cloud Computing Solution. Uh, uh, I will be the main speaker for this session. Uh, and my colleague, uh, who is the hybrid cloud uh, architect, uh, Leo Li, yeah. uh, will assist me for the live demo of this session. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, it is well known that uh, the key benefits uh, that could be brought by the cloud computing technologies uh, like TCO savings, the business agilities, uh, can be brought by the IT infrastructure consolidations uh, that is powered by the cloud operating system uh, of uh, OpenStack uh, is especially uh, achieved by means of the uh, unified uh, management entry point and uh, standardized APIs for the on-demand infrastructure as a service. So the, the larger the range of the resource consolidations, uh, the higher levels uh, of resource automations and utilizations, uh, as well as the uh, better uh, resource elasticities can be achieved in order to satisfy the, f the rapid changing requirements on the business and market. So uh, as, as we know that before the uh, introduction of uh, OpenStack, the legacy uh, virtualization technologies uh, like the VMware and Zen servers, they can be used for a small range of uh, resource consolidation which is based on the legacy, uh, small cluster uh, virtualizations and unified management. So after the introduction of uh, OpenStack, uh, the range of resource consolidations is enlarged to a, uh, the whole data center range that is covering uh, multiple uh, clusters and even availability zones. Uh, meaning that multiple clusters of uh, virtual machines can be managed and automated through a unified single pane of glass, OpenStack, or the service consoles for all the cloud tenants. And also, of course, uh, the uh, scalability of uh, each single cluster is enlarged to several tens of uh, physical hosts to more than uh, several hundreds of uh, physical nodes within uh, each cluster or AZ. So furthermore, uh, as uh, introduced by Huawei's, uh, proposed by Huawei's uh, uh, OpenStack cascading proposals, uh, it can be further enabled to consolidate multiple data centers resources uh, in the infrastructure layers to be a unified logical poolings uh, that is cover, covering multiple deployment sites and instances of OpenStack. Uh, that is uh, uh, a, another major project uh, that is covered by the so-called uh, TriCircle uh, project, also uh, led by Huawei. So uh, by adhere to the very same philosophy, uh, is it uh, possible to uh, adopt the very same architectures to even uh, further on enlarge the uh, infrastructure consolidation range to other third-party heterogeneous cloud? Um, our answer is yes. It is uh, fully feasible. And in the following session of these uh, uh, slides, we will show you how the working mechanisms and, and, uh, and architecture is working behind and how, uh, the, uh, to what extent we can actually achieve the capabilities of uh, cross heterogeneous cloud consolidations and how smooth experiences can be achieved via the uh, unified uh, management portal of uh, OpenStack uh, dashboards. 
Okay, so uh, it is a well known uh, about uh, the common benefits that could be brought by the uh, hybrid cloud to enterprise private uh, cloud constructions, especially, first of all, in terms of uh, enabling, uh, extending, and migration or sc scale scaling the resources from the private cloud to the public cloud, uh, especially to satisfy the cloud burst requirement uh, to handle the, the uh, temporary uh, large scale of uh, resource requirement and enable the dev and test uh, in public cloud while smoothly migrate that uh, whole uh, certified uh, environment without changing any configurations smoothly from the uh, public cloud back to the private cloud. This is one of the typical uh, application scenario of hybrid cloud. Uh, especially f uh, focusing on the users of a private cloud. Uh, another major uh, usage scenarios that have been uh, identified is the private cloud to public cloud backup and recovery, which is featured by backing up the code data uh, or non-confidential uh, data from the uh, private cloud to the public cloud without the necessity of building his own NAS or massive storages. Uh, within his uh, cell phone uh, data center sites. And of course, the, uh, another major issues, uh, uh, possibilities, is trying to deploy the different sets of applications in different uh, cloud uh, point of presence. For example, mission critical and application backend databases located within the private cloud, while the non-mission critical or more uh, temporary resource and bursty traffic patterns uh, workloads being placed uh, within the, the public cloud. But all with all the relevant workload with the unified IP addressing, uh, security plannings and governance uh, across both uh, private, and uh, private and public cloud environments. So, um, Besides the benefits to uh, the hybrid cloud, benefits to the, the private cloud, is, it, is, it, is there any value added to the public cloud scenarios? Uh, our suggestion is that uh, also it could be equally applicable to public cloud uh, for these, uh, uh, in order to build up some differentiators for public cloud operators. Uh, one of the potential cases might for uh, the multinational uh, enterprises who will be the, uh, one of the uh, major uh, type of customers of the public cloud services for telecom operators or other uh, cloud uh, carriers. Uh, where it, it might be possible, for example, for a T-system cloud, public cloud, that is trying to offer the public cloud services to uh, China or Japan branch of Germany, uh, Germany, uh, German companies, you know, uh, without uh, tr uh, the necessity of building uh, T-system data centers in the territory of uh, China or Japan. Yeah, so uh, he can just uh, leverage the local uh, public cloud resources and this, uh, utilize the hybrid cloud to establish the connectivity between the two clouds in order to offer the uh, you know, interactive, uh, better interactive cloud uh, services like video workspace to the remote cloud tenants uh, without uh, you know, building his own data centers uh, which is close to users' access pro proximity. Other cases might be uh, useful cases, might be seamlessly moving workloads from non-OpenStack public cloud or private cloud to the OpenStack-based public cloud. Uh, this migrations could be uh, anticipated to be migrated in a very seamless uh, manner so that the duration of uh, s uh, service interruptions or the level of service, service continuities can be achieved um, as far uh, as possible uh, as the uh, provider can do. 
Uh, and the final uh, cases, uh, benefits for the public cloud uh, hybrid scenarios is for satisfying, of course, the temporary bursty traffic requirement in case uh, there is the, uh, a shortage of resources for self-owned uh, physical uh, available uh, resource pooling. So how about the tech technical readiness? Uh, and is, th is there any uh, blocking point uh, for achieving this um, uh, ideal uh, usage scenarios uh, of hybrid cloud? Uh, we think that there's still lots of challenges uh, ahead. Uh, first of all, them uh, is the challenges uh, about the consistency, the capabilities, and uh, API exposure, as well as the uh, interactive consistencies across all different types of uh, cloud capabilities that is covering uh, both OpenStack, as well as the AWS from Amazon, vCloud from VMware, and Azure from Microsoft. So as can be seen, uh, in various dimensions, including the image types, the metadata capability, the data volumes, the security rules, and the API differences, uh, there is uh, lots of uh, differentiated uh, available capabilities in all these dimensions across these uh, heterogeneous cloud choices. So it is really hard for any cloud tenants or uh, cloud administrators to provide the real unified management experiences across all these heterogeneous cloud backends. And especially uh, when the backend uh, capabilities are not available, it is even more difficult for the, uh, for, for the uh, pure software-based adaptation to smooth this uh, differentiation. And the second biggest challenge is uh, because the, the addresses, majorly the addresses uh, uh, of uh, networking plannings and security policies, are not fully uh, unified, managed across the cl cloud boundaries. And the ACL and the communication metrics need to be set up manually uh, after the adjustment and, and or movement migration of the relevant workload uh, between the uh, cloud presents. So these, these kinds of uh, rescheduling of workloads uh, across the cloud will bring uh, tremendous complicated manual uh, work efforts uh, in the uh, networking and management environments. Third challenges could be the uh, difficulties of uh, moving uh, the workloads across clouds uh, with a single point of, uh, uh, with a single uh, one-click uh, triggering uh, of the whole migration tasks. Uh, because of the images, first of all, the image types and format across these uh, uh, different uh, types of uh, hybrid cloud is quite different. And also, the networking, uh, the layer four to seven uh, networking capabilities, uh, including the uh, security group, firewall, and load balancings are also not fully uh, managed across the cloud. So it, it will also bring lots of uh, difficulties of uh, moving workload, uh, workloads around the clouds, and especially to do some automatic task of uh, scaling the uh, workloads without changing the networking and security attributes during the whole procedure. And fourth challenge is, of course, uh, always will be the security. Uh, potential uh, breaches uh, that could be introduced when uh, trying to establish the secured guaranteed tunnels uh, between the interconnected cloud resource poolings, uh, both in the uh, interconnecting uh, networking channels uh, as well as the boundaries uh, of the anti-DOS uh, borders uh, of the public cloud offerings, as well as the uh, potential uh, security uh, attacks uh, between the uh, tenant boundaries within the same hosted environments. So it, it will be also very crucial uh, for guarantee the private cloud or the extended cloud environments uh, when he is trying to apply the additional resources from another uh, cloud 
uh, and uh, security uh, governance range. So how could finally these um, uh, key challenges be finally handled uh, and also uh, what's the, the, the potential uh, uh, architectures behind could be sat satisfying these uh, challenges and key requirements? Uh, our answer is that uh, by adopting the same philosophy of uh, cascading or multi-site OpenStack by means of the, uh, a unified cloud of brokers that is setting on top of uh, a series of heterogeneous cloud backend no matter whether these cloud backends is provided by a self-constructed data center or some third-party heterogeneous cloud uh, already in presence. Uh, this including th other third-party OpenStack-based cloud or uh, a, a full heterogeneous cloud like uh, Amazon's and vCloud Azure's and etc. Uh, so that these unified cloud brokers were serving as the unified API entry point uh, no matter what type of uh, cloud backend is sitting behind. Uh, and also sharing the very same service catalog, service orchestrations, uh, and uh, OpenStack, uh, uniformed uh, OpenStack AP API exposures. Um, and, and most of importance, the quota management for all the tenants across the, uh, all the, the, the underlying uh, cloud uh, resource providers. There will be unified and flexible deployments across all clouds and seamlessly workload movements between the clouds and uh, very uh, easy to uh, invoke uh, scalings across the cloud boundaries and of course the fully guaranteed securities. The, um, a deep, uh, with more deep dive into the cloud brokers uh, under these end-to-end uh, -end, uh, OpenStack hybrid cloud is the uh, cascading OpenStack based uh, umbrella or the unified entry point of uh, um, resource quota management and API exposures, as well as the service catalog that is covering all the uh, backend uh, hybrid clouds. Uh, this is, uh, uh, these uh, cloud broker layers is a fully standardized uh, cascading OpenStack based, which is also named as the tricycle that is used to orchestrate and connect uh, multi uh, multiple clouds, uh, no matter uh, uh, in, you know, uh, what is the semantic differences uh, that is uh, sitting behind uh, these unified cascading OpenStack uh, umbrella. And what about the cloud broker? Underneath these uh, unified umbrellas of uh, uh, cloud, uh, 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 what about the cloud gateways? Uh, that is also working in synergy with the unified entry point of a cloud broker. Here, as can be seen, the cloud gateways is also uh, consists of a key, uh, first of all, the key controlling uh, layer components from the OpenStack, leveraging all the key uh, elements and building blocks of OpenStack, of uh, Nova, Cinder, and Neutron, uh, talking the full standardized OpenStack language, uh, languages to cloud broker, while at the same time underneath these uh, key uh, fundamental compute storage and networking services, there is a series of uh, crucial building blocks uh, behind, including the cloud drivers, which is used to adapt uh, the fundamental uh, resource invocation API capabilities to the uh, backend heterogeneous cloud, including AWS, uh, vCloud, and other future possible uh, cloud backends. And uh, V2V cloud for necessary uh, you know, cross uh, cloud image translations, hyper switches, for uh, establishing the cross cloud uh, uh, overlaying networkings and the border gateways, especially to guarantee the security and uh, establish a uh, highly security guaranteed context uh, and uh, uh, ciphered protected uh, tunnelings across the clouds. And of course, storage gateways, could, which could be used for migration, workload migrations and real-time uh, 
disaster re real-time or incremental disaster recoveries across the uh, cloud boundaries. So here's the um, the, the standardized uh, you know uh, cloud gateways is just uh, deployed on top of heterogeneous cloud uh, backend clouds corresponding to a specific OpenStack AZ. And here we just uh, give you the more uh, deep dive uh, explanations of uh, unified networking across the clouds. Uh, that is uh, covering the uh, enabling the one networking uh, across all the clouds with unified IP address management, layers two, three connection across the clouds, and also the DTL, uh, the DTLS uh, security channels across the clouds, as well as the multi-tenant overlaying VXLAN, uh, layer, uh, layer two or layer three uh, interconnectivities between the clouds. And of course, uh, with the introductions of the so-called storage gateways, which, which is actually an overlaying uh, storage layers on top of heterogeneous backend uh, native, uh, the cloud native uh, underlying storages and the upper layer virtual machines. So, so that all the intermediary IO attempts will, in, will be intercepted by these storage gateways uh, in the in the guest operating system building blocks, while at the same time making it possible to do the uh, necessary incremental snapshot backup and disaster recovery across the whole cloud boundaries, and of course, while at the same time it is necessary for uh, enabling the API exposures uh, in extra to the fully standardized uh, API sets. And of course, by the way, uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, the cross-cloud uh, migration, workload migrations, the V2V gateways is also optionally presents here in order to handle the task of a fully automated V2V translations uh, across the different VM images types. And uh, yeah, and finally, of course, is the Docker. Here's the Docker over OpenStack hybrid cloud uh, illustrations, where the, each of the tenant will be deployed. It, it's a dedicated uh, master or Docker container schedulers that is based on the Kubernetes. Uh, and also here's the uh, OpenStack uh, uh, service orchestrations and workflow managers like Murano can be used to automatically deploy all these um, container resource ma management and schedulers, as well as a running VM environment for all this uh, microservice uh, Docker containers. And here specifically, you know, by combining and running all the uh, Docker application distributed uh, on top of the OpenStack, it will be seamlessly bridging uh, and combining the, the benefits of uh, fully orchestrated storage and networking with that of the agile, fully uh, guest OS decoupled uh, Docker deployment uh, on top of um, various kinds of hybrid clouds uh, with a very seam seamless uh, user experiences. And there will be, of course, uh, uh, comparing to the VM-based uh, hybrid cloud approaches, these Docker-based hybrid cloud solutions will need no more VM image translations between the different hypervisors. And also, there will be no so-called hypervisor uh, you know, drivers uh, visible to the end users, the guest environments. OK, so uh, that's just a uh, brief overview of the, the key architectures that is employed to support the uh, architectures of the OpenStack-powered hybrid cloud. So nextly, we would like to give you a, a live demo and show the what extent can be achieved for these uh, seamless experiences and um, a unified uh, workload management across all these heterogeneous cloud uh, where fully standardized OpenStack dashboard of Horizon. This is actually a modified, as can be seen, in the right side screen, this is a fully standardized OpenStack dashboard with uh, just a slight modification and enhancement to reflect 
the uh, different the specific availability zones that is corresponding to specific heterogeneous uh, backend cloud, including Amazon Cloud in Singapore, and two heterogeneous cloud, one OpenStack cloud deployed in Shenzhen, China, and the other uh, vCloud, VMware vCloud, also deployed in Shenzhen. This is a fully live demo you know, with all the operations, uh, you know, really performed uh, without any simulation, yeah. Okay, uh, and the next following uh, key, uh, we will have a, a demo of uh, five major cases. Uh, first one will be the unified management of uh, multiple clouds via these uh, horizon-based, uh, via these uh, horizon-based portals, as can be seen. Yeah. Okay, so oh. uh, I will uh, launch your instance yeah. from the OpenStack dashboard to uh, any uh, underlay cloud. So mm -hmm. I choose the AWS cloud mm -hmm. and give a name, test, mm -hmm. and uh, select an image. Uh, on end, and uh, select the Network. K mm -hmm. KPL, security group, network, mm -hmm. and uh, the user data. So all these things uh, is a, a standard OpenStack method. So we can use this method to launch any instance to Amazon or vCloud. Yeah, during this demo cases, you can uh, observe the fully unified user experiences without any difference on the, you know, uh, operation capabilities on different types of uh, backend clouds. Uh, because we are using the cascaded or the native OpenStack to, to be deployed, or you can consider it as a cloud, which is OpenStack-based cloud gateway, which is natively deployed in a third-party heterogeneous cloud, like AWS and vCloud so that your, all your operation capabilities is 100% OpenStack compatible. So no need of uh, any you know, cross heterogeneous cloud adaptation or loss of cap uh, some certain uh, capabilities, not compatible capabilities. Okay, so yeah. this is done. Yeah. We can continue to the next. Yeah. So just we, within minutes, you can see with okay. the single virtual machine, it can be uh, seamlessly provisioned in any of the backend clouds. And also uh, back to the to the initial dashboard, we can also see that. Yeah, you, you can see after the uh, provision, you can see from different key dimensions, including CPU, the number of uh, virtual CPUs, RAM volumes and volume capacities uh, is different uh, resource distribution in different backend clouds in terms of uh, percentages for the specific cloud tenant. Yeah. This is fully leveraging the uh, ecosystems and the capabilities of the OpenStack uh, communities. Yeah. So uh, next demos, we would like to uh, adopt an, an a, a open source online shopping systems, which is based on Megento. Megento uh, is an uh, open source online shopping for fashion goods. Uh, and also, um, we, we are uh, pre previously deploying these uh, online shopping systems, uh, so-called as eMore, eMore systems, uh, on top, uh, on top of a OpenStack-based private cloud, so that uh, cloud can be, uh, for example, under the event of a rushing hour or promotion day or some Christmas, you know, holiday uh, events, it it, it 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 is required to um, apply huge amount of resources in a very short period of time uh, in order to enable the cloud burst. Uh, across the cloud boundaries of uh, OpenStack, uh, private cloud, and Amazon uh, public cloud. This is uh, enabled as demonstrated by this graph. Uh, by this graph, 
uh, enabled by you know deploying additional web front end instances in the Amazons while maintaining all the load balancings and the back end databases within the private cloud so that all the interconnections especially the big layer 2 connectivities between load balancers and the newly extended uh, web instances will be guaranteed and fully automated accomplish it without any uh, human configuration. Okay, we will uh, start the okay. operation of this uh, cross clouds uh, uh, web app uh, uh, yeah. scaling. We don't have enough time, so maybe we just okay. uh, launch the instance and uh, go yeah. to the next uh, demo. Okay. So you see we have a uh, load balance here. The load balance already have a uh, uh, floating IP uh, bounded to the load balance. Uh, we could so have uh, yeah, 10, we 10 more minutes. So we yeah. connect to this uh, uh, IP so we can yeah. see the web server is working. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I will, uh, to do the test, I will remove the members from this uh, load balance to add, uh, to scale new member from Amazon. So here, I just uh, delete this member from node balance, the right side, uh, so we can see this, this server will go down. Okay, one moment. Yeah, so, so. before we extending the uh -huh. Amazon web instances, we are deleting the uh, f web front end from the OpenStack private cloud to okay. demonstrate to you that after the extending, of uh, web front in the AWS, it is uh, working again. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, I scaled two new uh, web front to Amazon. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you can see the there's two new aut aut automatic launched instance to Amazon. And it will also automatically join the load balance of our website. So three minutes later, this website will go back. Yeah, so it will take a while for the yeah. uh, launching of the w uh, web instances in the AWS and for the initialization. Yeah. Yeah. You see, Amazon yeah. is also it's doing is this. Uh, this is a AWS portal. As can be seen, it is being uh, spawning the relevant uh, instances in real time. Okay, so I okay. think we can go to the next. Okay. Yeah, we only have We will uh, return back for checking the results. And the uh, next uh, cases, we're uh, going to use another uh, interesting uh, application, which is an online editor of uh, Etherpad. This Etherpad, we will use this specific applications uh, for the migration across the cloud, as well as the geographical redundancy. Uh, across the OpenStack, uh, uh, across the VMware, OpenStack, and a AWS. These three heterogeneous um, private and public clouds. Okay, okay. so uh, first we check this, uh, this server. I think it's already ready now. And I will change to uh, this EPAD. It's another project in OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, uh, already deployed this uh, easy pad. It is uh, yeah. It is uh, originally deployed in the uh, V cloud in the V cloud in okay. Shenzhen, and we will try to migrate these uh, V cloud. And maybe you also need to uh, enter into the V cloud client okay. to check the instance. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah this is the V cloud have, uh, client. Five instance yes. here. Yeah. And, uh, this server, the user path is here, yeah. and we just uh, change something. Uh, this is a uh, migrate test mm -hmm. from vCloud to OpenStack. Okay, so we check this user path is saved, and now we just click migrate from uh, v Cloud to OpenStack. Yeah. Yeah. So within two minutes, it will be migrated uh, in real time from v Cloud to OpenStack.
Uh, uh, this is not a live migration, it's a volume-based uh, migration. You can consider it as a code migration, but without any persistent data loss during the migration, yeah. Okay, you see the first, uh, the Amazon yeah. uh, website is okay, coming back. Okay, now it is, uh, it's working, yeah. yeah. This the, is auto the newly extended yeah. uh, web instances. Uh, and this one, the, the yeah. migration, you see, uh, it is done because the, we are doing the migration, so the user path is reconnecting to the yeah. Yeah, service, and uh, so it need about uh, two minutes to do. Okay. It is still migrating. Okay, yeah. we can uh, continue with the next one? Yeah. Yeah, the disaster recovery. Here we are trying to demo you the cross-cloud disaster recovery from OpenStack to AWS. Okay, so yeah. uh, we have a, a same uh, EasyPad application. Mm -hmm. We can first visit it and uh, call it uh, BR. Yeah, we will, en we will uh, enter something. some customized content to check that when fill over, we can recover that content BR test as the original input. From OpenStack to AWS. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I will do. Uh, so uh, every this uh, DR will do an incremental backup from OpenStack to AWS every ten minutes. So to do this demo, I will do a manual backup to check it. Yeah. Okay. So here the relevant volume will be incremental, uh, snapshot, uh, synchronous to the, from the OpenStack to the AWS. And then we, we can base on these uh, incremental snapshot and the regional volumes to recover the whole okay. uh, volumes and virtual machines, booting it from the AWS. Okay, and uh, we are uh, shut down this, uh, this uh, uh, OpenStack DR service to uh, simulate a uh, crash. Yeah, yeah a AZ. real disaster recovery yeah. situation. So you can see this yeah. uh, DR, it will service down here, and then we do a recover to Amazon. So with this, with this uh, spec specific uh, demo cases, actually this uh, cross-cloud uh, disaster recovery is achieved by means of uh, so-called overlay storage gateway. That is uh, sitting between the uh, virtual machines uh, and the underlying native storages of the heterogeneous cloud, including vCloud and AWS, so that all the relevant I.O. attempts can be synchronized uh, in real time or in the inc uh, incremental s snapshot manner uh, in the asynchronous manners from uh, one cloud to the other. Okay, yeah. you can see the migration test is finished. Now it, yeah. it, uh, this uh, user path is yeah. already migrated yeah. from uh, the cloud yeah. to our OpenStack. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the DR, okay. uh, we are need, uh, I think, mm -hmm. uh, two minutes, but uh, okay. we don't, we are run out. Okay, so and we uh, just, uh, Finish is uh, with the last uh, demo case of a uh, uh, container across the three heterogeneous cloud. Uh, that is uh, deploying the, the Docker containers. Uh, irrelevant of the the the, the backend uh, cloud uh, types sitting behind. Yeah. Do do we still have time to do uh, this? Thing? Maybe a short. Uh, okay, I think maybe. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah. so uh, you can see here we yeah. have a cluster mm. here, yeah. and uh, it is uh, pre-deployed to uh, multiple uh, different cloud. Yeah. So this is a Docker environment across uh, three different cloud. So we can just uh, deploy the Docker application yeah. into this uh, uh, environment. Yeah, here we are using the online uh, blogging systems of uh, WordPress. 
uh, which is packaged in a Docker manner to be deployed across all these uh, uh, three heterogeneous cloud of uh, OpenStack, VMware, and AWS. Okay, so yeah. now it, it starts to deploy across different cloud. Yeah. Okay. So you did about one minute, so we don't have time. Let's okay, uh, so uh, finally just a quick summaries and a recap of the key uh, ideas of these sessions is that the unified OpenStack API and ecosystems that is covering heterogeneous public and private cloud is fully feasible and possible by means of these uh, cascading based uh, architectural approaches and it can achieve consistent experiences and capabilities across all these heterogeneous cloud that is covering unified layer two three networkings unified APP configuration, networking management, uh, one-click disaster recovery and migrations across the cloud, and also Docker-based uh, container, lightweight, uh, you know, agile de deployment across the clouds. Okay, so finally, we are just uh, proposing, uh, if you have more interest on the detailed demo cases and uh, working behind mechanisms, you can visit our booth Huawei booth, with uh, you know, uh, always uh, waiting for you, for uh, all the relevant uh, detailed explanations, and also we are going to propose some incubate projects for these OpenStack powered hybrid cloud, that is featured by several uh, incubate project proposals like the heterogeneous cloud AWS Azure and V Cloud adapter, the V2V services and the hyper network, basically. These capabilities, the user plane capabilities, will be uh, are left to the vendor-specific implementations. Here we are just trying to uh, organize the controlling layer or the API service layer standardizations in the open source group uh, underneath the unified op OpenStack umbrella. Okay, thank you for that's uh, all for our demonstration today. Thank you. Thank you.